and you can track it back through time and space. And this explains things that have no apparent physical vehicle, like Edgar Cayce's, uh, you know, the, uh, the Akashic Record, which of course everyone thinks about as being some area up here somewhere, you know, but the Akashic Record is available in every cell. And Jung's collective unconscious, similarly, is a record of that historical process. And when you take some certain substances, what's interesting is that uh, hallucinogenic drugs and plants very often accelerate your metabolism. And when that happens, you travel back in age, because each age of your life is attached to a particular uh, molecular level of speed. And when your metabolism expands beyond a certain speed, you go back through childhood. Hence, uh, the horizon comes much, much closer. That smaller, closer objects become objects of amazing beauty and, and complexity. And then at a certain point, you go faster than your birth moment. And you enter a pre-uterine world. And in that world, you have no visual concept, so you see swirling lights. And, and in fact, you travel back through history. So I've developed this kind of postulate in a number of ways, and many astrologers around the world have been using it. I mean, it's, you know, I've written 20 books, but about six of them are about astrology. So yes, I wrote a book called The Divine Plot in the 80s that's about reincarnation, astrology, cosmology, history. And that's a linear movement, the, the precession of the equinoxes, creating that complete cycle that, that always links back to the galactic center. Um, it's very much like in the lifetime, that we're still living under a kind of Galilean and Euclidean logic, which says that every year is the same because it's the same length, but in reality, in our life, time compacts as we age. It moves faster, it accelerates. Uh, what I believe is happening is that there's an acceleration occurring right now on this planet and that it's an acceleration of consciousness just as it's an acceleration of population. And indeed, it, it's a very interesting idea in many ways because it reaches a certain point where we will flip out into a whole different dimension. This is an idea I've held you know, since the beginning. And of course it corresponds with a 2012 dynamic and so on. And it's very, very interesting. It's like the, the McKenna's chose to take a kind of I Ching metaphor in terms of uh, measuring this process, but uh, a logarithmic scale, which I also use. And this comes from the Colin Spensky work, that it's a spiral process and that our time develops in life exponentially. In fact, at conception, it's molecular and then it, it becomes cellular as we are conceived and our body is created and then at death, of course, the whole process dissipates. We disassemble, in fact, the, the four bodies, and that soul that's liberated at death, you know, in the Spensky idea, of course, uh, travels into infinity in that moment, or eternity, and returns to a new womb. So, it's very interesting because my way of doing astrology, it's fascinating because it not only comes from spiritual traditions that are very Eastern, but it also actually is, has this connection to biology. I just recently came across some amazing work by a physicist called Garrett Lisi, uh, something called E8. And you can see it on YouTube by just searching on these, on these names. But it basically is a mandala pattern like mandalas I've been painting since the late 60s, early 70s. Except it's a theory that includes all of the modern kind of uh, primary particles, but also gravity. And it's, it's so mandalic, it's so astrological, it's so tuned in to certain images that I've been making for years that it's, it's very interesting. I see a lot of this coalescing and I think both 2012 and the Uranus-Pluto square evoke these kinds of ideas. What happens is that when the planets move through time and space, and this is the Colin analogy, uh, when they move through time and space, they leave an electronic pattern. And of course, that electronic pattern via resonance, you know, resonance is, is uh, a communication method that's not based on 
traveling through time and or space, but rather it's an instantaneous transmission of information. So any two things in the universe, no matter how far apart they are, that have the same structure resonate. When you see someone you connect with immediately across the room, there's a resonance between the energy pattern you carry and the energy pattern they carry. And th this information is transmitted. So when we have planetary events, for example, uh, everyone's resonating with it. Very few are really knowing where that resonance derives from. And astrology is simply a way of, within my metaphor, not only of decoding DNA, but it's also a way of uh, decoding these kind of planetary signals that we're continually receiving. And it, um, it becomes really, I think, quite a powerful and interesting metaphor to actually explore. Yeah, well, we carry many beings within ourselves in the sense that uh, once there's a gate that exists at around the conception point, which in astrology is the ninth cusp, and the eighth house is death and the end of life, and the ninth house is conception and re rebirth and so on. And, and, and as the Tibetan Buddhists believe, and Hindus, and many, many other sects, that once the, those kind of gateways and barriers are penetrated through an initiation of some kind, there are many ways to achieve that, but once that barrier is broken, you have access through the DNA spiral to time and space. And similarly, you could say in a way that it's access to the galactic core. You know, and it, it, this, this is kind of intriguing because the implication is that, uh, well, there are a number of implications. One of them that's very interesting is that the DNA molecule has been decoded. We all know this. But what we don't know is that they've decoded 1% of the DNA molecule. They consider the other 99% junk DNA. And I believe that junk DNA is really the repository of the Akashic Record, the collective unconscious, and that it represents traces of all history. And in fact, not just back to the first life on this planet, but because of the nature of it, it actually goes back into a kind of uh, mineral level of reality. This is all Rodney Collin work. And, uh, and, and that basically there are a series of cycles within cycles. And Collin said, you know, the cycles go from moon to earth to sun and, to, and solar system to galaxy. But there was a space between the galactic center and earth uh, and the sun, and Colin figured out mathematically that the missing component was exactly the same time and or distance away as the planet Sirius. So, and, and the Egyptians, as you probably know, considered Sirius to be the sun of our sun. So, the interesting thing is that um, I gave a talk on this at CIIS. Rick Tarnas invited me a few years ago, and I, I got the faculty in a total uproar by talking about this because the scientific mind finds it very difficult to kind of understand this kind of logic, but the drift of it is really quite fascinating that uh, we have access to this junk DNA, which is all history, but once you access it, and people access it who are psychotic or are spiritual and mediumistic and people who uh, are able to break down those barriers through various chemicals, drugs, dances, music, trance, all kinds of things. So